elixirs this is what I use people this is the string to buy medium gauge phosphor bronze acoustic guitar strings it's been about a month and a half and uh, it's time to change guitar strings and we're going to show you how to do that right now okay I can't believe that in all this time I've never really done a how to change your guitar strings video so this might be a little choppy because I'll have to be setting the phone down. I'm using my um, Kyocera Rise phone for this. So I might have to uh, set it down. But anyway, uh, basically what you're going to need is a guitar. Check. And here's what I always keep in my case. You know, this is a little good extra stuff for you. This is just some extra stuff that I keep. And uh, I haven't done a review on these. don't know if I will, but I've got the cord wheel. haven't really had a chance to check that out. But I have had a chance to check out the uh, guitar wheel. Very awesome device. Maybe I can do a review on that. Why don't you just leave me a comment below. Actually, actually, scratch that. Instead of going and leaving a comment below about this, why don't you go to my guitar lesson suggestion box. And uh, that's one of my playlists. That's the only video in it. And leave me a suggestion if you would like me to do a review on either one of these. That would be awesome if you could just go do me a favor and leave the review there. That's where I'm keeping up with all my suggestions from now on so that I won't lose them. I mean, there's so many videos that I have and it's easy to lose the comments. Anyway, back to this. I don't want this to be a very long video. I have a polishing cloth. I have um, a cord because this is acoustic electric. I have uh, something I recently found which is awesome and I've put this on another video lately. And that is tennis bands wristbands this is great for uh when you're sweating and you don't have a handkerchief or anything you just wear these and they're great it'd be nice if i could maybe make some signature <laughs> sweatbands with my logo on here or something i don't know but some spare strings and just some spare guitar you know parts saddles and stuff for capos and stuff like that and then this little device which is very awesome i'll have to show you how to do this this is basically a uh soapbox and I've drilled some holes in it. And this is a travel case. Drill some holes in the top and the bottom. You just get a sponge and cut it the same size as that. And it's going to shrink after you put water in it. But you put, uh, you, you soak it with water. Wring it out real good. Stick it in the case. Stick it in your guitar case. Preferably in the body. Now I don't have it right now working. So I don't have it in the body. Because it's been so humid you don't need it. This is actually to help provide humidity and moisture to your guitar. The ideal setting is between 45 and 55 humidity. And if you've got a temperature gauge or humidity gauge, then you can check that when you need to. And so you just typically stick it here in the body where the cutaway is or underneath the neck where it just sets, like this maybe. And uh, it keeps the, heat, the moisture in there. So for changing the strings though, what I'm going to need is I always keep a pack in here of, of the last time I changed them. And it's been about a month and a half ago. Uh, so I'm going to change those. What I'm going to use for this is a couple things. Basically, you just need a string winder. And these are very cheap. You can get these just about anywhere. This is really saves you a lot of time. This is a Jim, Dun Jim Dunlop one, as you can see. String winder. You're going to need some uh, wire cutters. And I use these to not only clip the wires, but also to pull out the bridge pins. But you got to do that very, very carefully. And um, let's see what else we got in here. That's pretty much it. And of course you need your strings. Now if I think of anything else, I will name that, but I'm pretty sure that's it. Just two little things and you got it going. So let's go ahead and uh, get this started here. Get the case out of the way here. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is get our uh, materials here all in one place, easily manageable. First thing we're gonna do is just cape, go ahead and take my capo off here. All you have to do for that is just twist it together and just pull it off. I'm using the page click capo. I've done a, a review on that on my channel. You can look that up. And then basically from there, we just start uh, detuning the strings one at a time. And I usually like to do this so that I can make sure I'm doing it in the right direction. And Water Mountain is playing a show tonight at the Dixie Cafe. And depending on when you get this, it might be a while <laughs> since we've played it. But uh, we're playing the show tonight on Dixie Cafe. So I've got to change these strings. They're, they're getting kind of dead. And... Uh, I've got some new strings, some new picks, things like that. Then you do the other side. Okay, and you want to get them nice and loose here. 
pretty much. Okay, and then from there, let's go on to the other end and tell you what I'm going to do here. Here's where I take the bridge pins out. And you got to be, this is going to be, you have to be careful here because I don't want to ding the guitar up. But I just take basically the bottom part and I, I kind of like leverage it there and just barely squeeze it and just lift it up. There's not much to it. And then I just put the uh, bridge pins off to the side here in the same order which I pulled them out so they'll be easily referenced. Just like that. Okay, from there, basically you just take these and pull them out, just like that. Try to keep them together if you can. And you come to the other side, and I'm not going to worry about keeping them together right now because I have one hand to work with, so... You go to the other side, and you have to be careful here. You don't, basically, I'm just going to take and uh, wind around until I get close to the end, and then very close to the post, pull it. Because if you don't pull it close to the post, and you pull it way back here, as you pull it, it'll flip back, and it might sting you. So you don't want none of that. So go ahead and close to the post, like that. All right, and once you get all of them taken off, you just combine them like this. Basically, I'm going to take these and wrap them up into one big spool about the size of the box so that I can put the strings in the bag that the strings actually came in. Okay, so basically you take the curled end right here, you fold it under like this. You don't want to make it too big. You want it to be able to fit in the bag at the end. So once again, curled end under here, then you start looping the ball end through just like that. when you get done you have a finished product somewhat like this the camera kept falling off so I had to kind of do this off and on somewhat like this and you can fit it right in the uh, string case that's about the size so after that we get our strings out and start uh, working on that so we now have the first string out and what I typically like to do is go ahead and put all the strings in the in the take them all out and go ahead and put them all in here so they'll be ready to go and then I start on the headstock in, starting putting them in. And uh, I do that a very special way. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Put all the strings in, um, in there and uh, come back when we get that done. Okay, we got all the strings in there except for one. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this or not. Usually you have a little bit of excess. And that's where my first finger is right there, that little excess part of the string. If you turn it, it goes away. See how it moved to the side? You want that to be either on the top or the side of the ball. And in this case, it's going to have to be on the side. And what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll actually bend with my other finger. I will bend it to where it has a little bend on the string so it'll fit in the socket a lot better. And as I'm inserting the pin, I'm tugging with the string so that it seats in there real well while I'm pushing down on the pin. So make sure you keep that in mind. Keep that little excess on top or to the side. And the ball usually goes in this way, like that. And I usually bend the ball to where now it's bent and uh, the little excess is on close to the side. I'll put that in there with the ball side facing this way. And I'll let it go. I'll put the pin in and then tug on this as I'm seating the pin so that uh, it will seat in there very tightly. So let's do that real quick. There we have it. Uh, all of them are in there correctly. And I don't know if this matters or not, but I've always done this, and that is make sure that you put, when you take these out, keep them in order so that you can put them back in in order. Because naturally, this string is thicker than the last string, so you don't want, you want the one that came out of this to still be the one to go back in because it's already used to fitting in that specific groove. I don't know if that matters or not, but I've always done that. And as you can see, this is a Martin DCX-1E. Not sure if they sell these much anymore, but um, I'll have a link on the in the uh, show notes below here to the Martin X series. So once you get done with that, you come up here and you start winding the strings. Typically, I'll start, find my first string, start with it, bring it all the way up here. And the first string, usually I want to get all these seated a certain way. The holes, I want them to, to face 
pretty much that way. So I'm going to get the holes to where they're in line. You can see the hole coming around with the nut. So right about there for that one. So these are curved probably at about 5 o'clock and this one is about 6 o'clock. And the same thing, this will be curved to let's say 7 o'clock and this will be curved to around 6 o'clock again. So that one's about where I want it. And I, I want these to stay straight up and down too when I get done. So that when I'm turning each of the string, tuning them, they don't knock into each other. So that's a good little tip for you too as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first string, put it in here. And the way I learned to string, there's a couple different sources, but the one I, I've been using for years is there's a guy on eBay. There's a guy on eBay that uh, sells um, custom tuners. Uh, not like tune your guitar, but the little tuning winder things. Um, I put some on my other guitar a long time ago, and they're really awesome. But he's on eBay, and it's some kind of custom tuners. But anyway, he has a uh, method that he uses. I think his name's Ed something. But he has a method that he uses on tuning his strings. And uh, I'm going to show you that right now. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to take this string, the first one. And usually, I like to come back up here and kind of tug it to make sure it's seated real well and you also want these other strings out of the way too so i'm going to move these over to this side so that they're not in my way so kind of tuck them under there and now they're out of the way of the strings that i'm moving so anyway what i was saying was i tuck this to make sure it's seated in there and i come back and this string you're going to give it just you're going to seat it inside the nut there and you're going to come to the next post and what you do from there is you're going to come back and if you have um Tuning keys on either side, you're going to tune, uh, bend this string inwards towards you. So now that it kind of stays where it needs to be. We're going to turn this string, and as it loops, I'm going to let it go on top first, and then I'm going to lift up and let it come around on the, underneath. Okay, I'll get this right one of these days, guys. I apologize. This is confusing when I'm having to explain it. When you're tuning the post, okay? Follow me here. When you're tuning them, here's what you need to do with the string end. As you're tuning it along, the string end, the first time around, is going to go under itself. Okay? Not over itself. Under itself. Okay? It's going to go under itself first, and then the next revelation, it's going to go over itself. The thing itself. I forgot to mention, the reason you pull that excess out to the next post, what you usually do is you're going to pull the E string up to here, and then move it back, bend it. Pull the B string up to here, move it back, bend it inwards. Pull the D string to the headstock, pull it back, and bend it. And the rest of these you're going to do the same way, except for... The last two, what you're going to do is you're going to alligate a little bit more slack. What that does is allow you, allows you the perfect amount of slack for the string so you don't get too much over windings on the tuning, on the tuning post, which causes you to go in and out of tune a lot. On these, you're going to go one and a half, okay, on the A and the E string. You're going to go tune post, then the half the distance, then pull back and push inward. On this side, you push inward, you bend the string inward. On this side, you bend the string this way inward. So both times you're going to bend inward towards the headstock from whichever direction. Once again we're going to pull it to its full tension, leaving it seating in the nut. Pull it to its full tension. Now with A string we're going to go one and a little past that. We're going to pull it in. That leaves our string a lot of slack but that's what we need. We're going to pull it in and we're going to push it inward. Okay. Now I'm not going to be holding the string like you're supposed to be. Okay, I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to have to do my best, I guess, like this with my pinky. So as I'm pulling this, I'm allowing the string, I'm allowing the string to go underneath itself first. Okay, so I've got to tuck it underneath. Best I know how. Now watch that. It's going underneath itself first. Okay, so it's wrapping. It's going as it is now. The string winding is going up the post we don't want it to go up the post because it will mess up so now we've got to take it before we wrap it wrap it too further too too far you see where that little end spot is right there 
we're going to tuck it underneath that. Since it's already went over itself, we don't have to worry about that. So, let's go ahead. And this is why when you're holding this, you want to be holding this like that. Kind of guiding the string with your finger. So let me get up to that point and uh, see what happens. And now we're going to let the string go over itself. So what I'm going to have to do is, there you go, you watch that? It just went over itself, okay? From then on, we're going to let the string guide itself down. And as we come along, we're going to take our first finger and push up. Because these bottom windings will get loose, so we have to push them up with the string as we're winding, okay? So that's the way you do it. Under, then over, okay? And you'll, you'll leave that gap there. You see that little gap, but that's fine. That won't hurt anything, okay? So future reference, under, then over, okay? Let's string the rest of this bad boy up. Okay, it's stringed up now, and there's a lot of wiry mess around here, but that's fine. What we're going to do is we're going to take and cut these wires off at the end once they're tuned up. I always tune up first, and then I cut them off. But anyway, you see there's a lot more windings around these two strings. And you want that because that right there, well, these extra windings will help push the string downward further. And so you'll get a tighter tuning, and you'll have a tuning that's a lot better. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to tune this thing up, and then I'm going to show you what to do from there. I'm just going to use my onboard tuner, this little Fishman Precis Plus. I'm going to tune this up, then show you what to do when you get it up to standard tuning. And I recommend starting from the D string, okay? From the D string, because that will even your tuning. It's not going to make, because this requires a lot more tension. It's just easier to keep it in tune better when you start from the D string and work your way down, then come back up. Because you go from medium tension to light, 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 and then you have your harder tension. And one thing you need to do is every time you tune the next string, go back to the previous one and make sure it's still in tune, okay? That will help it tune evenly across the whole strings. All right, so we'll come back when it's all in tune. Okay, so we're mostly in tune, as you can see. Okay, now what you do as you're tuning, here's a little another tip. I use my string winder to tune up initially because it's such a big jump since they're all slack. After that, you can just use your finger to tune them. Also, I don't recommend the, the string winders that have like a drill on the end of them so where you can push it and wind them up real fast because I think that quick amount of tension that quickly is what causes a lot of string breakage. Now, I don't know that scientifically if that's true or not, but to me it makes sense. If I took here and took my string winder and just started winding it up real fast, that, that could cause some breakage because that's too much stress on the string at one time too quickly. So as I'm tuning, what I will do is I'll make sure I'll hit the note and I will tune the string. And as I'm doing that, I'll make sure all these are seated. I don't want any of them popping out or anything like that. And also as I'm tuning, I'll tune a little fast, but then when I get to a certain point, I'll take and push on the string to kind of stretch it to let it have a little bit more slack. And then I'll continue tuning. And I'll do that with all the strings, starting with a D, G, B, E, top E, and then A. And then I'll tune them all to standard. And what you want to do after that is you take it, and you're going to do this about three times. It doesn't take long. What I usually do is I'll just take the string and start stretching it. Middle, top, end of the fretboard. And you do that, bounce it about two or three times, do this with all the strings. You can do it whatever order you want to do it in, but you want to stretch the strings because this way the strings are being stretched before you start playing. You don't want the strings stretching and you getting out of tune all the time and, and, and having to tune while you're playing. So you do this beforehand. And don't worry, this I've never had a string break by doing this. That's why you want to keep an eye up here, make sure these are still you know seated real well. You don't want them to pop out or anything. So after you do that, then you tune the guitar all over again and you do this about three times. And so when I do this three times, we'll get to the end and we'll start snipping off uh, tuning strings and then we should be done, okay? So that took maybe five minutes to do that and uh, everything is in tune now. And one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, when I'm tuning, when I'm pulling these strings with my other hand, usually this hand is kind of helping along by taking a hold of each string and just pulling up while the other hand is pulling up from this side. 
typically I'll, I'll clean my guitar off before I do all the string changing. So you might want to do that. You know, put some lemon oil on your fretboard. I've got a micarta fretboard, so I don't have to worry about that. Now we're going to go ahead and um, move these other strings and go ahead and not move them, but clip them off. So that now that it's in tune, and you'll find as, as you do this stretch thing, it will get easier and the strings will stay in tune a lot more um, as you go back and retune them. It doesn't take long to do it all. Typically, an installation of strings, once you get used to this, takes about 30 to 35 minutes. That's usually about how long it takes me. And I just do a quick wipe down or polish or whatever all over the guitar. But uh, here's what we're going to do with these strings. Now, the, the way we bent them... Uh, is the way we're going to bend them one more time before we clip them. And what I mean is, if the, you bend them inwards, so let's take the string itself, turn it inwards, and then clip it. Turn it inwards, and then clip it, turn it inwards, and then we're going to clip it. And leave just about, you know, not much, but leave just a, a little bit, maybe half an inch protruding out. And I just use my, you know, my wire pliers for that nothing really fancy I'll just take it and I'll make sure that I can see the end where it is and I'll just take it here and then just snip it off after that you want to tune one more time and then everything should be in tune a couple more things here so that is what the strings should look like when you get done with them a uh, couple tips real quick when you're cutting these strings make sure you do not cut them at an angle because that will leave a sharp point on the end I mean they're gonna be sharp as it is but cut them flat as possible, as close as possible as you can, all the way up and down. Now, the other thing is, make sure when you're cutting that you look in reference to where your other strings are. I did this one time, and it really bummed me out. And I cut into one string and cut the other string, and it broke. And I didn't have any spares, so I had to go out and buy a whole new string. Or maybe even another pack of strings, I don't know. But you don't want to do that. So make sure you cut those flat, and you, you pay attention to the string surrounding the one you're cutting. The other thing is dispose of your trash by putting it in these bags and then ultimately putting it back into the case. And one final tip, that is always put the date on uh, the string change so that you know how long it's been since you've changed them. And then just put this in your guitar case, okay? As far as I know, unless I think it's something else real quick to put at the end of this, this should be the end of this uh, uh, video on how to change your guitar strings and how I change mine for peak uh, tuning performance and uh, not have to worry about them stretching and everything. So with that, I think I'm going to sign off and say thanks so much for watching and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment in the, in the comments below. Let me know if you've enjoyed it. Let me know how you change your strings. Maybe you can leave a video response and uh, with your ideas. I know pe people have all kinds of ideas on how to change strings, but... Uh, it's always uh, interesting to see what other people have found works for them. And uh, so with your uh, suggestions, just go ahead and leave those. And I'll see you in the next video, whatever that may be. Thanks so much for tuning in. And God bless. And please subscribe. And I'll see you next time.